is all activity the same? So if I'm doing strength training, is that as beneficial for my brain as potentially going for a run outdoors? That's a great question. And, um, you know, we, there is not a ton of very clear work that's compared directly different types of activity in ways that where, where I could tell you for sure, this is the best one, right? There are data that suggests that resistance training is beneficial to the brain. There's more work on endurance activity. And I actually think that's probably because it's easier to do rodent work on endurance activity than resistance. And so trying to translate across those models is a little bit easier. Both forms of exercise have benefits. They may be through different pathways. Um, there may be different biological mechanisms that are underlying those benefits. I've kind of seen some cool work coming out lately that has tried to look at uh, for example, different types of endurance exercise. So there's a great study that came out. Are you familiar with orienteering? It's a sport where you're given like a map and a compass and you have to uh, find your way across a route as fast as possible. So it kind of mixes endurance activity with spatial navigation and and uh, moving around your environment and figuring out where you are. Typically done outside, right? T oh, yeah. Always done outside. Across Typically done on natural, like on trails and things, but people do do it in cities as well. Oh, okay. So like, and this is over the miles and kilometers. Right. Yeah, this would be like a, like a trail run kind okay. of or something like that. And there was a great study that just came out looking at, um, it was a randomized control trial. So they actually randomized people into either an orienteering group or a hiking group or a control group. And over a couple months, they found that the orienteering group actually had uh, better performance on uh, cognitive tests like memory tests and executive function tests than even the hiking group. Both of those groups did better than the control group, but there was actually this extra boost if they, if, for the people who were in the orienteering group. So we're starting to see that maybe some different activities could potentially enhance the effects of exercise on the brain. What's um, the conclusion there? What does that study hint at in terms of because hiking you're out in nature right. you're navigating your way up a hill or something orienteering that it's a, it's almost like solving a puzzle right because you've got a map and a compass yeah i mean i think it, it fits into an evolutionary model at least in my mind um where the purpose of being physically active is to move around a habitat to find things find food, find water, find firewood. Um, and so physical activity in, in this sort of ecologically relevant world is a combination of cognitive challenges and physical challenges. So I think that when you combine them in the way that perhaps orienteering does, or maybe some other sports, you might actually get a bigger boost for your buck, a bigger bang for your buck um, in terms of the brain benefits. And that I think is rooted in our evolutionary history. Like I said, I think that being active in an evolutionary sense always comes with sort of a cognitive challenge. Nobody's ever just going out for a workout. There's no reason to. If you're not, if you don't need to find something, you're going to relax and rest because you're an energy minimizer, right? Mm -hmm. Don't spend that energy if you don't have to. Is there any animal studies that show how um, have doing challenging exercise, so cognitively challenging exercise, so exercise that involves problem solving, improves our neuroplasticity or increases our the amount of brain cells we have across our brain? Yes, yeah, there there have been, and a, a great. Um, impetus for our work was some of the work done in rodent studies um, by a, a professor named Gerd Kemperman. Um, and he and his group did some work in, in mouse models where they combined uh, access to running wheels with a very enriched cage environment. Um, so they looked at, they, they did a very careful study where they looked at some mice who were just living in their cage, you know, normally a control group. They looked at mice that were given access to a running wheel they looked at mice that were given access to this enriched environment that's cognitively challenging and things to play on. And then they looked at a combined group where they combined the running wheel with the enriched environment. And they found this effect where the combined environment doubled the growth and survival of new neurons compared to either wheel running alone or cage enrichment alone. So you got this really cool additive effect um, where, you, where you really enhance the effects of either one of those behaviors by combining them. If we can pull that conclusion over to human life, if, we can, if one assumes that the same effect will be seen in humans, what does that then tell us we should be doing if, we, if our objective is to live long, happy, healthy lives with fantastic brains? What should we then be doing exercise-wise? 
Well, I think number one is just getting active, right? So yeah. I think, you know, to me, the number one recommendation is, you know, to be physically active. And especially for people who aren't that active right now, um, the best thing they can do is get out and, and start walking. Um, but if we want to enhance the effects of physical activity on the brain and build on this animal work, we're starting to see some good evidence that if you do something similar, if you combine physical activity with cognitive challenges, you can boost the effects of physical activity on, um, on the brain, on, on especially cognitive uh, performance. And so you know, most of the work has been in controlled environments. So we've done a study where um, we built a, uh, a game that you can play while you're on an exercise machine. Um, so you combine exercise with challenging activities, right? Um, and we've shown that you can actually get a bigger benefit for cognition when you do that than when you just exercise or you just play a game. And so we can you know, take that and perhaps translate that into the real world and think about ways that you can uh, make your exercise more cognitively challenging. So can you go out and, and um, challenge yourself spatially? Take new routes, right? Oftentimes, especially runners or, or walkers, they just do the same route every time or the same, they have two or three routes that they do every time, depending on how long they want to go. But maybe we should be challenging ourselves a little more, right? Maybe we should take new routes where you get a little lost and then have to find your way back, right? I'm someone that runs on the treadmill, but Jack over there, he runs outdoors, so you're telling me, sort of top line, that Jack is serving his brain more than I am when I'm just on that same treadmill every day in my hotel room while I'm out here in New York, whereas he's running around Central Park. It's possible. So I think there's there's a couple things. Um, you know, running on a treadmill may end up being a little more like running on a running wheel for a mouse without the extra enrichment. And yeah, running outside may provide some of those better benefits. We also know that running outside actually has a lot more uh, benefits than just maybe cognition, but also seems to boost mood a little bit more than running or exercising in more impoverished environments, you know, cognitive. Really? Uh, yes. So there's like, there's a research movement called the green exercise movement that is uh, focused on uh, the impact of exercising in green spaces versus um, or more urban environments or, or indoors on exercise equipment. And I don't want to scare anybody. No, 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 like no. I said, exercise is great. Yeah. If, if, you, if running on a treadmill works yeah. for someone's lifestyle, it is fantastic exercise. But do right? you know what I mean? I could go outside. Yeah. So the only reason I'm not is because I don't know the difference. And right. I, so, right. you know, it's for, for someone like me, of course I could have gone outside this morning instead of just um, being on the treadmill. But I've, I, did, I thought they were the same. Right. So you're telling me that there is potentially some upside, according to research, in me getting outside and running in both mood and neuroplasticity makes me go, okay, tomorrow I'll make a different decision. Absolutely. I think that, I mean, to me, that's the really surprising outcome of a lot of this research is that uh, moving outside and especially moving in green spaces, so moving in um, parks or near parks or uh, moving on trails, things like that, seems to uh, have bigger benefits, especially for mood. We don't know yet about the cognitive benefits. That's our hypothesis. But certainly uh, some of the research out there suggests that for mood and feelings of well-being, moving your body in a green space provides a little bit extra benefit than moving in, um, in, in like I said, in city streets or in, in indoors. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.